Welcome to Transforming HR Teams uh, and Integrating Atlassian Tools. My name is Brian Dar. I am joined by Maris Ashby, and there we are. Uh, I'm the head of enablement for Valiantis, and Maris is the People Experience Manager for North America. Um, and we are from a company called Valiantis. And uh, v Valiantis is actually uh, a partner with a software suite called Atlassian, and they make a lot of tools. This is a fancy slide saying that we know our stuff, but you can ignore that. Uh, hopefully you'll see that during, during this presentation, you'll get a lot of nice ideas um, for yourselves. Uh, and here's some more stuff. I, basically within this ecosystem, we do consulting and licensing, and we do custom software development. We do training like this webinar slash meeting. Uh, and all of that fun stuff. But why are we here today? Uh, Maris, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, we were challenged with a beautiful task to do sort of a SHRM webinar showcasing lightly some of the Atlassian tools and how um, they are adapting to the climate and providing wonderful solutions for our HR team members. That is why I'm here today. Um, I am a lot less experienced when it comes to uh, webcasts like this, um, but we wanted to have an HR perspective for you all so that when you're looking at tooling, when you're looking at adapting your team, you can see that um, some solutions are quite easy and really accessible. Um, so I'm so thrilled to be joined with Brian here. Um, he really is truly um, a leader and an expert in this space. He has helped our organization, so Valiantis, um, build out some incredible tooling that has absolutely ignited both the efficiency um, and the successes of our HR team. So I'm pretty thrilled to be working alongside him today to bring some of those to you all, uh, to everyone who will be watching this. Um, because you know we don't we don't need to rewrite things, and sometimes um, tooling like Atlassian tools can be packaged in a way where they may seem inaccessible. So you'll shed all of that. <laughs> Hopefully, <notion. laughs> it won't be so inaccessible today. But, Absolutely, but you're totally right. I, yeah. I think sometimes this, this really scares people. Yeah, off. and um, we had beautiful buy-in when it came to that Sherm web um, webcast, and we heard from a lot of team members that wanted us to dive more deeply into the tooling. So. That's what's landed us here today. Um, we will be doing so, kind of sharing even more um, just tips and tricks, how we've done it, how we can do it for other organizations, um, and just dive into actual solutions for HR team members. Yeah, so hopefully you, you get a lot out of this. Um, this really is intended to spark your thoughts and creativity ab around your own internal processes and tools. Um, and hopefully get you thinking about some ways that you can uh, make them work even better for you. So thanks for your time today. <laughs> we hope it's valuable. All right, um, so in this, in this uh, presentation, we're gonna talk about the general concepts from one of our favorite books, Getting Things Done by David Allen. We're going to walk through uh, three specific HR solutions, which are personal task management, um, HR specific, uh, processes that need to get done and managing business transformation projects within your your HR organization. And then we're going to talk about how to get started with all of them. Um, all of this is something that you can pick up and build tomorrow or today if you're um, if you're an overachiever. <laughs> so let's talk about getting things done. Um, it is no secret that HR teams are busier than ever. And with that higher hopefully productivity, not just busyness, but productivity, um, comes a much greater need to manage our time uh, to prioritize all of the tasks in front of us. And frankly, as per this book, to get things done. Uh, so we thought that this book would be a great companion to the processes and tools that, that make HR teams successful. So uh, let's talk about the general concepts of getting things done. Oh, if you want to talk about this, or I'm happy to talk about this. Or, all right, cool. Um, so Hopefully, everyone watching this today and in the future uh, has read Getting Things Done. If not, highly recommend it. It has a lot of very actionable things that you can do to make yourself more productive. Now, of course, it's not just about productivity. It's about um, making good um, outcomes. But um, in, order, in, order, in order to do that, we have to get things done. So one of the uh, one of the key focuses that they have is goal horizons. And so when you look at the work to be done in front of you, you can kind of break it out into these six um, 
categories. Starting over on the left is probably where most of us live every single day, and that's in current actions. Uh, these are immediate actions, tasks, to-dos, broken down very, very granularly. What's the next thing to do? Uh, after that, David Allen talks about projects, which are a collection of tasks. Uh, and these are all short-term things within about 12 months. Um, and these are outcomes that you're committed to. What's interesting in the book is that David Allen also describes a project would be like getting mom a birthday gift because it involves more than one thing. It involves the task of thinking about what mom would want, deciding on what mom would want, ordering what mom would want, and then wrapping it. So it's actually you know four, four different tasks within a project. But these projects can also expand pretty largely as well. But either way, it's basically a collection of tasks. And again, I think that maybe we all focus sort of on this end of the spectrum. He then moves out uh, and, and talks about areas of focus and responsibility. So um, myself as, as a spouse, uh, myself as a coworker, uh, myself as a parent. And so making sure that we're focusing on those areas of responsibility and then setting projects to support those areas of responsibility and setting tasks into those. Zooming out a little bit, we have goals that relate to those key areas. Uh, you know, how can I be a better coworker? How can I improve in my career? How can I be a better partner, a better father, uh, a better brother? Zooming out beyond that, uh, I guess this is like 20,000, 30,000 foot level. 30,000. Uh, 30, thank you. Uh, we get up to vision. So what's our, what's our three to five year vision um, that covers both personal and professional sides of our lives? And then zooming out even above that, uh, we have our core values. And so in this book, there's a framework for setting actions at each of these layers. Uh, spoiler alert, you can also do that in the processes and tools that we're going to talk about today, which I think is very exciting. Um, I think a lot of project management software and processes really stops right at the project level and even ignores goals and vision. But we're going to talk about ways that you can um, get all the way up to that today as well. The reason why I absolutely love this book and how I find it applicable almost specifically for HRT members um, is, you know, we have a particular challenge. It's not just our team, but it's probably especially our team. And our challenge is that we are having to navigate not only our own priorities and maybe the direct priorities of our teams, but also the priorities of the business, yeah. right? Any, any of our stakeholders, and that could be no matter the position you're in in HR, you have the affect of everyone else's business goals, mm -hmm. the vision for how are we propelling our organization, the different strategies, the different challenges of all of these different departments. Um, so I especially love really the tool set that David gives to us um, for the purpose of how do I direct my priorities within each priority that yeah. I have? We don't exist in a world where I can have one a day. Yeah, um, sadly. Never. <laughs> so um, yeah, I love how you encouraged, you're right, everyone should read this book. And I think the applications for our challenges in task management, it's, he, he, he provides such a great guide. Yeah. Such a great guide. No, totally agree. All right. So let's talk about some of the, some of the key concepts. There's really five key concepts out of the book in the system of getting things done. Um, and we're going to review these and then we're going to apply them to tools and processes. So uh, first is capture. Uh, we need a place to capture everything that needs attention, uh, tasks, ideas, projects into a reliable system. And he calls that uh, quite frequently in the book, an, an inbox. So, so where do you put the, the things that you suddenly think of as you're walking uh, to the bathroom in the middle of the day or, or those great shower ideas or anything that comes out of a meeting? Um, we need an inbox. After that, we need to refine those, those items um, and clarify them. So, so maybe in the middle of a meeting, I thought, oh, mom's birthday, and I just wrote down mom's birthday. Well, that's not really clear enough. Um, so what we need to do is break that down. Uh, is that a project? Is that a, is, that a, um, is that a specific task? We need to clarify the work that we're wanting to do and determine what, what are the next steps within that. And this is also um, basic, project, basic project management. After that, uh, he, he talks about a very specific way of organizing them. Um, specifically, uh, is it a project or is it a task? 
Um, and then also flagging those items with contexts and deadlines and then putting them into a system where they can be easily retrieved. There's a lot in this right here. I mean, this is like half the book. Um, so, so for example, context, do I do it? Uh, is this a, is this a work area of responsibility or is this a personal, is this a parent? Is this a spouse area of responsibility? Um, and where am I going to do that? Uh, can I work on this at home? Can I work on this? Uh, standing in line at the grocery store? Can I work on this at work? Uh, how long is it going to take? Do I think it's going to take five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours? And then being able to figure out based on that information to pull it back up and do it at the appropriate time. Um, placing it in a trusted system where it can easily be retrieved, that's where things like calendars and to-do lists and a lot of the software that we're going to show today um, is going to play a major part you know maybe you have an app like todoist or maybe it's uh the notes app on your phone either way you need a system where they can be easily retrieved but just because you put them in a system doesn't mean you're going to do anything with them um you know maybe your system is where all great ideas go to die hopefully not um so then you have to regularly review the system and keep it up to date you have to reprioritize your work you have to make adjustments uh, one of my favorite things from a different author, uh, Peter Drucker, he talks about um, effective executives always work on the number one priority right now. And when they're done with that priority, they don't go on to number two, they reprioritize and they make sure that they're working on the next number one. Because in the time it took you to get the first thing done, the world may have changed, business priorities may have changed. And so part of that reflection is constantly updating the system. Um, and making sure that, you know, do we still need to do this thing? Just because we thought it was a good idea last week doesn't mean it's still a good idea this week. Um, how many of us have worked on dead projects? <laughs> Too um, many. Yeah. Dead and buried. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully buried. <laughs> um, yeah. And then lastly, um, you know, choosing, uh, uh, he calls it engaged, but choosing the, the right task to focus on based on your time, based on your energy, and based on your priorities. And so having all this cleared up means that at the end of the day, when you've got you know, 30 minutes before you go home, you know, you can pick a 25 minute task maybe and just get to work on that. Or if you have no energy, you recognize that looking at the list goes, that, you know, I don't have the brain power for any of this right now. And you go ahead and pivot to the next thing in your life. And that's okay too. And I like that he provides a system of forgiveness for doing that. What a, what a perfect way to, to summarize that. He provides a system. And the reason why I'm excited today is, right, we have so many wonderful tools like David Allen's book that help us to understand the importance of like task management. How to identify them? What are really proven ways to actually discern different types of tasks, different levels, like you said, different priorities. Um, but then you're creating a tool for us to actually keep Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that's the hard part, right? I, I can read this, right? I can enjoy the content. I can say, oh yes, what wonderful. What a, <laughs> what a good approach. And I can try it a few times. Um, and so I'm really excited when we start to dive into Trello to actually showcase the ways yeah. in which you can put this into application. Yeah. Um, and then that's proven to work. It's great. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Because great ideas without a delivery system yeah, yeah. remain great ideas. And that's it. All right. So, so let's talk about these demos. Um, so we're going to dive into personal task management in a tool called Trello. And specifically, we want to introduce the tools that we have built for ourselves and, and, and also a number of our clients. Um, so yeah, I, there's a term called dog fooding. Uh, within the software industry. And it, um, oddly enough, it comes from a dog food uh, manufacturer where the CEO stood up at a conference and opened up a can of dog food and ate it and said, you know, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for your dog. Um, and so we use the same tools to manage our lives that we're talking about today and, and that we also help our clients with. Um, and this also allows us to, to reify and reinforce the principles of getting things done uh, within our everyday workflows. So we're gonna talk about personal task management in Trello. We're gonna talk about specific process management, uh, like hiring, which um, we're gonna do in a tool called Jira. And we're gonna talk about um, broad project management, uh, the, the managing of um, you know, year-long HR transformative initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, also in Jira. 
uh, it's not scary. It's really fun. We think you're going to like it. So uh, hopping into. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So it's grateful go, for it. Yeah. I didn't mean to go that far. There's actually probably more slides uh, for later, but anyway. All right. Yep. Okay. So now if I come to Trello. All right. If you've never seen it, this is Trello. Trello is a free application made by Atlassian. There is a paid version. Uh, I personally use the free one all day long at home. Uh, we use the paid one at work, but uh, both of them will work out great for you. And, and we'll talk about some of the differences. But basically Trello is this thing right here. It's a board. Um, that's what the whole thing is called. And the board is made up of lists and the lists contain cards and the cards would tend to be uh, tasks that need to get done. Uh, the lists are rearrangeable. So you could build a process flow like to do, to in progress, to done. Uh, or they can be broad categories of information. Each list could represent a whole project if you want. And they're very easy to make. You just come over here and just add another list. And as far as I know, there's no uh, there's no known limit that I've reached of the number of lists that you can have on one board. Uh, there's something really beautiful about the flexibility of this because you can just get started right away and just throw down tasks and just go with the flow. Um, one nice thing is that all of these items, they move very, very easily from, from uh, list to list and you can re-rank them within the list, which is part of that constant prioritization that's very important. Um, and if we just you know, click into one of these. Basically, we have a summary. We have a description that has wiki style editing. So I could add, you know, headers in here. Um, so I could make, maybe this is the outline uh, notes. And then I have like another section below that. We can do uh, bulleted lists. We can do numbered lists. You can make things in red, whatever you want. And then you can save that information here. Uh, we can also add attachments to these cards. We can add links to important documents. We can comment. So um, maybe there's an update to this item that we that we need to let people know about. Uh, if you're sharing a board with you know more than just yourself, you can have conversations around work items here. And then as you as you change things, we can click on show details, and you can see the major changes that were made. Did it move from a list? When did it move? Who moved it? Um, and there's a lot of other cool stuff in here too. You can you can add uh, specific members to this card to represent the people that should be doing the work. Uh, you can add a checklist. I, I, I personally love the checklist here. So uh, item one, item two, and then you can check them off as you go. Uh, and you can hide the checked items if you want, such that every time you come back here, you can see the next thing to get done. You could add uh, dates to this card. So you could add a due date, for example, and a start date. And you can have Trello remind you uh, before that due date, which is quite helpful. Um, you can set a location. If you have the premium version, you can create custom fields that your team members can use to capture important information and reinforce that they need to add that information. Um, there's so much in this tool. Uh, I cannot speak highly of it enough. And what I like the most about it is it is so simple to get started. You know, mm -hmm. just start capturing your ideas. What the, so what this has basically replaced for myself and for my team members is right the notepad on the side of our desk that travels from meeting to meeting, or even most presently, OneNote. Mm, yeah. So, you know, I work, um, I'm, I'm a pretty high functioning business partner, right? So I have a lot of meetings with um, stakeholders on a daily basis. And so the way that I'm really kind of building out my Trello, my specific Trello board, because you're right, it's so adaptable. I don't have to, I'm not really confined to anything specific, though I think you had said once, like, it's quite easy to find templates, yeah. which is oh, really yeah. wonderful. But the way that I'm using this is it has effectively replaced my note keeping with individual stakeholders. Um, yeah. And then also in my, say, one-on-one -on -one meetings with my direct team members, those who I'm collaborating with um, most often, and what I can do then is house everything visible or not with those specific team members so that we know that we've captured everything appropriately. Because far too often can we be in a conversation that's rapid fire, or as you said, it's on the way to the bathroom and you say, yep, okay, I need to pocket that. You can just put your little blips down on here, revisit, 
build it out and then set in triggers like a date, who needs to have visibility into this task? What do I need to do with it? Is it a project? Is it a task? Is this done? Do I delegate? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's such a wonderful tool for that. And it's honestly a lot more visible and accessible than something like OneNote. Yeah. Because the one thing it does do for us is it, it puts the tiniest oomph behind your step to make sure that your note taking is visible. So what I mean by that is we all have our very effective ways of taking notes during a meeting, right? Maybe it's got swirls and lines and colors and all these different things, but that doesn't quite work in HR, right? Yeah. Because leaders or team members I'm collaborating with need to be able to jump in and understand it. So like you're right, things like the checklist, things like having an outline seated in these cards where we can invite team members to be part of it. I just love it. I love it. And it does, it captures everything. It's all locked down. That was one thing mm. I don't think you mentioned yet. Um, while this is a completely free tool, it is still like, it is your board. It is locked down as much or as little as you wish it to be yeah. as far as who you're sharing it with team members. So it fits. It's, it's I'm going to use the word, it's compliant yeah. <laughs> in, in the sense that, you know, only those who I want to see it will see it. Yeah. Um, in that first webinar uh, for SHRM, I, I went, uh, I briefly started to dive into this as such a wonderful solution tool for the idea of working in, in, in public. And we kind of dove a little bit deeper into, into that as a solution because as HR team members, as other business units, right, our day is constantly taken from us, yeah. right? We are jumping into the next very critical conversation. We need to be able to pull in our team members at any time to say, oh my goodness, can you finish this? And even taking the five, 10 minutes to context dump, <laughs> Brian, help, right? Mayday. The, the, the solution that this provides is simply like, hey, Brian, can you please jump in my to-do list? this and everything would be there for him where he could just jump in, has the context, has the next steps, and we can move forward together effectively as a team where nothing's getting lost. So it's just such a good solution tool. And the fact that it's free, the fact that it is so adaptable. Yeah. I really love it. No, me too. <laughs> Probably sounds silly with how I love it, but I love this tool. When you find a good tool, yeah. it makes a huge difference. Um, some other some other helpful things. Um, Maris mentioned a place to capture. Uh, David Allen in his book talks about mm -hmm. the importance of capture. So uh, whenever I make a board uh, for my personal use, uh, and I've got one for work and I've got one for home because I, I want to keep those contexts totally separate. And actually, I have one between my partner and I. So that's where we share uh, restaurants that we want to visit, movies we want to watch, things like that. Um, but over here on the on the inbox column, if I have a brilliant shower idea, I could just put that in there. Or if I'm or if I'm you know need to talk to my boss and my boss's uh, initials are GH, uh, you know talk about X. And then inevitably I wind up needing needing to talk about so much more than X. So I wind up coming in here and I make a bulleted list of all the things that I, that I need to talk about with them. Um, some other things that help, we suggested uh, to do in progress and completed columns. The nice thing about that is that um, you can you can remind yourself what you're currently working on by moving things into in progress. And if you follow agile methodologies, you'll be reminded that you shouldn't have too many things in progress at once. Too many things in progress means you just can't get anything done. Uh, and then completed is a nice way to double check and say, oh, wow, I, I did get that done. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, there's also this function in Trello where if you add three dashes uh, to a card, it'll make a line. And so I use this line where anything above it is my most important tasks for today, you know, besides whatever I'm already working on. And I can move this up and down too. Um, but that tells me that this stuff is just not as important down here. I also like having a delegated and waiting item. So maybe I'm working on this and I've done it and it's ready for review. I'll move it over here and I'll just add uh, the person that um, that that is working on this or that I'm waiting on. And then sometimes I'll even put in a deadline for me to, to check back uh, and see. A project column, 
priority projects. I like this because if if you really need to get things done, you'll notice that this is really great for those for those clear next actions mm -hmm. that you're supposed to always have, but it's not so great for rolling things up into projects. And there's a number of ways to do that within, within Trello, but my favorite way is to simply create a project column, make sure that I never have more than, you know, certainly not more than five, but usually preferably just three projects that I am currently responsible for. Um, and then every day I glance at that column and then I make sure that I've got something in my to-do list that is the next actionable thing for each of those projects that I'm currently working on. I find that quite helpful. That actually lends to another amazing way in which you can um, build these boards out. Um, in my case, you know, I've got my to-do list. I have my to-do list board, right? We've talked through that. But um, as Brian said, like there's there's not exactly a limit, and so you can you can have a personal task board, right? Which is this one so aptly named, or the idea of a project board. So having those big items, maybe you know the blueprint of your HR function, mm. those big goals, as we said, the goals and the visions for the department, and then you can still see all of those important things underneath, right? Yeah. So a column would say something like um, improve onboarding. We're, we'll talk about that in our next tool. Maybe it's specifically. Um, you know, integrate new AI tools for the team, for team, for, for efficiencies. And so our column would say something like that. And then each card you would be able to adapt with a to-do list, different phases of that project. It's such a beautiful, like it's as adaptable as your pen and paper. Yes. Right. That's, I love that part because I was, I, <laughs> I was a colored pen and pad of paper person <laughs> forever. I still go back to that, right? But now it's transferable and it's conveyable, yeah. which is so, so important. The Absolutely. last little piece I wanted to talk about this as far as HR, like how I'm using it as a solution as an HR team member um, is actually in my one-on-ones. So what is so amazing about this is if you do have a board, in my case, I do, you know, as I mentioned with those stakeholders, what it actually does is maximize the time that you're spending in meetings and everyone, like, no one is immune to the exhaustive recurring meeting demon that happens on our calendars. Hmm. But we never want to give up that absolutely valuable time with team members, with stakeholders, with leaders, whoever it is that we are spending our time with. Right. Yeah. But there are so many ways in which we can maximize that value. And utilizing tools like this, when you have everything laid out, first of all, there's a good chance you already have them connected to the board. And so they've got visibility, clear yep. visibility into it at any point in time that they need it, right? Again, it's not housed in your one note on your desktop, right? It's it's not traveling with you from meeting to meeting. It's accessible no matter where you are, where, where you are in the world, where you are in time, um, it's right there. And so it also leads and guides discussions bringing the ability to um, have very, very effective one-on-ones and enjoy, if you do have extra time, actually just getting to be a person yeah. versus let me think through this laundry list of items that I've been collecting yes. to put forward. So it's just such a wonderful tool for that. One other way that we use it internally as well, um, and I love it, this is also the way that Atlassian, the makers of this product, use it too, is um, we have an onboarding template board. Yes. And okay. so uh, that has, you know, to do in progress done. And then we use a feature that we haven't shown yet, which is labels. So if you come here and uh, you can add colored labels, you can also add things like, you know, 30 days. And so everything in green is going to be a 30 day item. Um, and so so those stack up first within um, within the to do column. And and whenever a new person comes on board, their manager copies the template, adds additional tasks that are relevant for their job. And we have a database of those tasks living in a different tool ready to go. Um, and then the manager and the new hire both have visibility to that board and the manager can just glance at the board and see how the new hire is doing. It's a great way to see if someone's a self-starter. It's a great way to see if somebody needs a little nudge um, to see how they think. You can comment on the cards back and forth. And it's just a nice source of truth for how somebody is progressing in the first 30, 60 or 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing before we switch to the next demo is um, 
there's also some other views besides just the board view. And those views are available in the paid version uh, in, in Trello Premium. One of those is a calendar view. Uh, and that's where, and I don't have, I, I only have one thing on this board with a date, which I think was uh, in November. And so you'll see, um, yeah, there we go. So that card that had a deadline, uh, we can even we can even expand it across number of days between a start date and an end date. And when we click in, it'll pop up that card. There's there's also a list view where we can see all of our cards um, next to each other. There, uh, that's actually the uh, uh, the table view. There's a dashboard. There's a timeline view. There's a there's a map coordinate view. But the list view, for example, here here I can you know rapidly update fields across all the cards if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. All of those extra views come with the paid version, but um, honestly, you can get so much out of this on the free version, it's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Well, the calendar view is amazing because like it's it's the best tool for process yeah. planning. So um, I, keep, I just keep throwing these out. This is how we use it, right? So for our merit increase process and oh, yeah. like salary review, meritorious increases, yearly bonuses, right? I can put that process into motion, those key dates and have a good scope. The other reason why this is great, um, through the process planning, you're automatically visibly showcasing capacity planning yeah. all in one. So again, when you have put in your processes built off of your goals, your, your, your visions, your projects, um, and you're putting it in a way that's a lot more accessible. You've got the alerts, like you said, you have the ability to, to dive right in there and do your quick to do's, your quick uh, delegations, but you're automatically doing that capacity planning. Any one of my leaders, my direct leaders or my stakeholders could jump in and see how much you're see doing. See what I want to see. Yeah, <laughs> see what I want them to see, which is important, right? See what I want them to see. But notice that when, if I say, gosh, the end of September, if we can move this to the first week of October, you're yeah. going to get the best product. And they'll know that that's not anything short of that's the best time for me to deliver this on you. I just love it. It's very, very effective for our teams because yeah. I don't think we mentioned this yet, but we are a global organization. Um, so here at Valiantis, right, my team members, I am I'm the only one that sits within the United States. And of course, with different countries come different time zones. And so this is such a beautiful way to showcase what we're working on, where we're at in the process, what's on the horizon, what might we be daunted about, how can we reshift focus? Love it. Great calendar tool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're going to switch hats um, and we're going to move from personal task management and maybe team task management into what I would call process management. So totally different concept here. Um, this time we're talking about the repeatable processes that you might need to do hundreds of times a year, like hiring. Um, so whereas Trello is great for flexible loosely structured task management, either at an individual or at a team level, we're going to switch to a tool now, which is I say is like Trello's bigger, more mature brother, Jira, um, which is a strange name if you've never heard of it before, but it comes from Godzilla. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long story. Um, but hiring is a process that we want to get right every time. And we want to do it the same every time. We want to make sure that a person has their laptop at the right time. We want to make sure that everyone gets a background check. We want to make sure that people know the start date and the hiring manager and where they are in the process and how many how many uh, downstream dependent tasks have not been completed before the start date. Uh, what department we're hiring for? Do we have enough people that we're hiring for that department? All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to make the switch into JIRA. And I'm going to show you our hiring project, which I... If uh, if I loved uh, if I love Trello, I love this even more. Do you know what I love about Jira? You build this. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't have to build this, <laughs> oh, which see. is magnificent. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> so so we, so what you're looking at here is kind of like Trello. Um, we have these lists or columns on a board, and in uh, in this case, each of the cards represents a human that we are working with to get them hired. So for example, uh, right now, uh, Elena Morales, she is a candidate. 
Um, Leo Rossi, we're currently interviewing them. Daniel Kim, we're, we're preparing an offer. Olivia, the offer is sent and we're waiting for a response. These two people have said yes, and now we're waiting on a background check. And for all these people, we're doing all of those last minute stuff just before they come on board because we've got to get everything done. Um, this board, much like Trello, you can drag uh, things around, but unlike Trello, you'll notice it's a pretty restricted workflow intentionally. And if I click into one of these, um, I can see all of the details about this person. Um, now, there's not a lot of details about, about hiring a person that I would put into this tool, um, except we have the person responsible for bringing them through the workflow. So basically the recruiter or, uh, yeah, yeah, basically the recruiter. Uh, we have the reporter, which for us is a proxy for, uh, for the hiring manager, but we can also rename that field and say hiring manager very, very specifically. We have the department that they're being hired into. Uh, we have where, where we, um, uh, where we recruited them from. And then there's a comment elsewhere that, you know, tells us about the referral. Uh, and then we have their official start date. Now, what I love here is this is an example of a really powerful way to connect tools in a very simple way. Uh, this is a link to, to that person's HRIS profile. So I don't have to put any of their personal details, their address, any of that info into this tool, because this is a this is going to be a broadly visible tool across management. Um, and so I can I can get that manager to click on this and it takes them very, very quickly into that reserve space that does its own permission checking. Mm -hmm. um, so I can make the process visible while still restricting information, but making that information easily accessible. If I come up here, this is the current status. And if I click here, you saw on the board that I can drag and drop the cards, but I can also pr uh, progress it in the workflow here or send it back or at any time in the workflow, I can say they, they withdrew their candidacy or they're not a fit. Uh, but most importantly, and this is probably the best part, I can click on view workflow and anybody can see this that has access to this project. And now I have tied visibility of the overall process and where that person sits into the process right into the tool. We don't have to have a separate uh, documentation somewhere that tells people how we hire people it's just here in the tool that we're already using to track. So in our life, we go from candidate to video interview to formal interview, preparing offer, waiting on a response or offer sent, background check, finalizing, and done. And like I said, at any point, they can go on hold or they can withdraw or they can be deemed not a fit. So that's the basics of this project. But there's a whole lot more cool stuff that we've added to it that, that, that we find very helpful. The first is on the board, we have these quick filters. And we just have a couple of example ones here. So delivery, marketing, sales, these are the different departments these people might be in. So I can click on marketing and filter down just to the people that we're currently hiring for marketing. Or I can click on sales and I can see where everyone is in here. And I can even send a link of this filtered view to the sales manager to remind them that, hey, your pipeline is right here. You can see where everyone is ready to go. We've also put, put this little thin uh, pink band on cards and that pink band appears. Um, I'm trying to remember what we did, that, but basically it's telling somebody that they're not far enough through the process before their start date. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so here, so it's now the 26th of September. We're still waiting for this person. We scheduled them to start on the 22nd. This card has a problem. <laughs> Um, so it basically tells us if we're not far enough along in, in the process and to pull our focus to that, to swarm around that and make sure it gets done. Mm -hmm. My favorite part about this, though, is there is some automation that is controlled by the HR team, not myself as an administrator of this tool, but by Maris, who, who is closest to the process and knows what people need best for this process. So what happens is when I move it between background check and finalizing, there's an automation that runs in the background and it generates these subtasks here on the card. And in our world, these subtasks automatically get assigned to the right people within our organization that have to get stuff done. So for example, uh, provision hardware, this would get assigned to Dan. 
um, uh, the person that manages IT for us. And IT system access, uh, Dan's got an assistant that does that. And benefits registration, that would be Sherry. Mm -hmm. um, and so each of those would not only get auto-generated when it moves between background check and finalizing, but it gets automatically assigned. And now the hiring manager can come in and they can see, whoa, uh, this person was supposed to start weeks ago and we don't even have their hardware ready yet. What's going on, guys? Um, but as they get updated, they can then come in here and they can see, oh, okay, we're currently provisioning the hardware. All right, well, at least that's okay. And now we can go ask these two particular people about where the system access is and where the benefits registration is. So we have now made the entire process visible, open, collaborative, and there's even a history on each item where you can see who updated what. There's a demo instance, so we just kind of moved things back and forth a lot. But um, you know, we can see every little change, the whole history is there. And we can even uh, add comments to each other like you saw in Trello. So cross-team collaboration, downstream task management, visibility. Um, oh, and uh, Maris has the control over all of these tasks. So she, uh, over the automation that generates them. So mm -hmm. as the process evolves over time, she can, you know, if she doesn't like the spelling, if she doesn't like the wording, if she needs to add three more tasks, she can just do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is tremendous. That that and the workflow visibility just makes my day. Yeah. So one of the talking about the workflow visibility, like the downstream, I have not seen another tool that can do. Uh, if I don't know if you can go quickly back to the last view where it shows every, you know, every candidate in motion. Yeah. So the best part about this, just as Brian stated, is I've got team members all throughout the organization that all need to come together at very specific times during the onboarding process to make it successful, to make sure it's not delayed. So Dan, right, who's provisioning IT, Sherry, who's working through those benefits, can look at all of our candidates at those final phases and be anticipative, right? They're not going to start their process, right? Because yes. we still want to make sure that background clears, et cetera. But Ooh, that wonderful word again, capacity planning. Yes. Sherry knows that I could have three people I'm onboarding next week. I need to delegate this to my team members or I need to make sure to do a block where it is more likely than not, I will have three new hires that I will need to work work through and engage with on benefits. And our team members love that because I know we cannot be the only ones that prior to having a tool like this, basically a lot of the exchange happened in email. Onboarding yeah. happened through email. Yeah. Now, a lot of our really robust HRIS tools do a lot of this for us. Of course, even ours does, right? We use HiveOp in our organization. There are some wonderful um, workflows that we can incorporate. They're fantastic for HR team members and you know all of the different intricacies for, for our own processes. But there seems to be still very good opportunity for the collaboration with other teams. And that's why I love JIRA for this reason, is it's better, better than anything I've come across. We are just intertwined with IT, their process, their system accesses. I can manipulate it at any time. Like you said, I can trigger specifically through their onboarding. Hey, they in particular will need DocuSign day one. Yep, right. The yep. exceptions. And again, I'm not having to take critical time and energy to try to to do task list that send an email. Did I send that? Didn't I send that? We want it to be perfectly streamlined. And this tool does that. Tools and, that work for you, not the other way around. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. Tools that work for you. Yeah. And you're right. You know, after you set this in motion for us now, of course, with every I would say every three months, realistically, we're, we have a little tweak, right? Oh, we yeah. have um, a pressure from the market that is changing how we do things. Maybe we need to condense the amount of interviews because our can we're losing too many candidates to competitors because of the market, right? All of these different areas, you know, the foundation is built by experts in response to our own environment. So as HR professionals, what we have set up Right, this tool is created for us, yeah. our ecosystems, our yeah. infrastructures, and our processes. And then I just get to tweak it as yeah. need be. It's like, oh, aha, I could do that better. <laughs> yep. Or turns out that was a wish list item. Yeah, it's it's a great solution. I'm yeah, I 
this and and we've actually built this for a number of clients and what's nice is that we always kind of start from the same basic format but then i mean we've done it for um companies that onboard thousands of insurance agents every year uh and they have a very strict process uh about the way that they onboard we've done it for simple small businesses that have uh, a workflow even even less complicated than ours What's also nice is you can see the bottlenecks, you know, do, do we have 15 people under under interviewing or preparing offer, you know, do we need to do we need to coach our team on getting those offers out more quickly or, you know, do we need to build a better process under the offer prep, do we need to automate that a little bit better. Um, and like you said, we can we can update this as our processes change mm -hmm. because we're we're a growing business and and, and a growing ecosystem so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's not as if it's an, an additional tool in the sense that like I'm still quite literally physically hiring a person the same way. Right. right? Yeah. It goes from my applicant tracking system. I hire them through my HRIS system, right? Mm -hmm. Physically with putting in their th their credentials, clicking hire to launch every process that's either still in motion or the ones that are we're, we're setting up. But like you said, it talks with HiBob. Right? Yeah. It talks with our HRIS system or we put something in motion. That's the other thing I love about this is that you can create those communications in the sense that it triggers through triggering systems that already exist, yeah. which is so cool. So like I'm also finding that we don't we don't seem to run into a lot of limitations no. because we I can't break my hiring system. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say, well, now everybody, please just go to Jira because I like Jira. Right. <laughs> it just, yeah, it's it's really seamless. Yeah. It's seamless. And like you said, it's not a replacement for your recruiting tool, for mm -hmm. your HRIS tool. Um, this really manages the work that has to be done between those tools. And and it makes the process, it, it's, it, I, I like to think of it, it kind of sits above that, those other tools, because, uh, you know, you know, candidate is a whole workflow over in our recruiting tool. And, um, you know, once they're done, everything's happening over in the HRIS, but this kind of manages the process from above and provides that visibility. Mm. Oh, absolutely. So that's the hiring project. You can imagine we have other projects too, such as an offboarding project uh, where there's a process and a checklist and automations. And the thing about JIRA is I can, I can uh, have JIRA update external systems, uh, which is really cool. So uh, it can actually write to our HRAS and read from our HRAS and we built integrations for that. Mm -hmm. um, so we also, for internal mobility, right? So even oh, yep. just like a mm -hmm. transfer or a big transition or in and out of a leadership role, the ac accesses that they need, the training that come from HR team members. Um, you know, in, in our, our particular case, we, um, we help um, individuals work through job status. Um, so visas, immigration, um, that's a large element of our organization as well. Um, and so this is a perfect process management tool for us to do that because again, it's it's touching many more processes than just mine, right? Yeah. That's the thing is it's... <laughs> no, yeah. And I'm grateful because again, how easy is it? I would love to be able to throw up my hand and say, man, I never skip a beat, right? <laughs> like I just never miss it never miss an email. Um, it's just not true. Yeah, it's not my reality. You know, I get again, it's not exclusive to HR, but we are particularly impacted by rapid fire, rapid prioritization, and just having to absolutely context shift at the drop of a hat. Yeah. So unfortunately, it does mean that things can get lost. Yeah. So I, yeah, there's a lot of applications for this. All right, so that is demo number two, mm -hmm. live in the tool. Uh, let's come back here and just re-anchor. Now we're going to change contexts a little bit, and we're going to so we moved from personal tasks to uh, team level process management. Now we're going to elevate up to HR project management, um, which you can also do in Jira. And I'm going to totally change views, uh, and I'm going to show you a ro um, a roadmap that includes initiatives that break down into projects, that break down into tasks. Now, this is different from like a standard process, right? Because our, our major HR initiatives are changing all the time and they're different for every company. Um, and each, each initiative has never been done before in our company. So it's not a recurring process that we have mm -hmm. to manage. It is, it is a whole new thing that we are writing as we go. 
what's that ship where we're like re replacing the boards as we sail? Um, it's that idea. So uh, as HR professionals, we want to change the business um, in line with the business's goals. Uh, some of those business trans uh, transformative initiatives that we're going to work on are uh, we want to promote better work-life balance. Maybe that's an initiative for us internally. Or we want to create a, an employee recognition program. Or we want to roll out a new HRIS. You know, think about those sort of initiatives. Or, or after a merger, we want to combine HRISs. Or you know, all of that stuff. So to do that, I'm going to show you a different uh, piece of Jira. I'm, I'm going to switch over here to a timeline. I'm just going to let you look at the screen for a minute. There's a lot of information on this screen. Um, what you're looking at is all of our major HR initiatives that we have identified that we want to work on. Our roadmap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a start date and an end date that relates over here to this view. And I can even shrink this and we can see our, our overall roadmap here. Uh, green is done, blue is in progress, and dark blue is uh, still yet to do. I can see the progress of each of these major initiatives over here, and I can see the progress based on the children underneath, how many of those children are done. If I expand out one of these, so let's say um, we have an initiative to improve employee retention. I'm going to expand this initiative, and I see there's actually two projects living under that. Uh, we need to conduct employee satisfaction surveys. We haven't done that before. Uh, and we need to develop an employee recognition program. We have decided that these two projects are going to improve our employee retention. And each of those projects breaks down into tasks. Uh, for the employee satisfaction surveys, we're gonna design survey questions, distribute the surveys and analyze the results. And each of these has its own workflow, uh, the backlog to do in progress done and canceled. And so now I can see as, as HR leadership, I can see our overall roadmap, and my my team is working on the tasks and all i have to do is come in and just see how's that project going and i can i can see how many projects are done towards my initiatives when my initiatives will get done hopefully you're getting excited about um you know tracking all of your major work now in this mm -hmm. um and we can and and again we can assign a best guess as to when these dates uh, as to when these initiatives will be completed and we can have a conversation around that by showing this roadmap to uh, to our internal stakeholders, um, this is the roadmap view. If I if I were to to dive into the the human resources project management board, this is kind of like Trello and kind of like the hiring board. This is all of the tasks just shown in a different view that my team is working on on a day to day basis. So here we see all of the stuff in the to-do column, the stuff we're working on in progress and the stuff that we've recently completed. And these colored lozenges are the projects that these tasks roll up to. So, so if you remember from our roadmap, develop employee recognition program was one of the projects that rolls up to our um, uh, increasing employee satisfaction initiative. Mm -hmm. But this is the task that's actually getting that stuff done. I can see that Brian's working on that. I can see that Maris is currently deciding on our on our on our flex work policy, which is rolling up to a different project. And we can move these throughout our workflow. We can reprioritize them as we go. We can dive in and we can see all the same information, history, comments, conversations around all of this as well. So this is one of our favorite tools to do that, you know, special not process management initiative business transformation mm -hmm. work that is so important within uh, HR. And then also, if I only care about one of the projects, I can just filter down on one of those, you know, show me everything for our comprehensive onboarding program, which mm -hmm. is complete. So good for us on that one. The specifically our senior leaders love this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, because, you know, I, I think all the tools that you showcased so far, Brian, like it's sort of an individual level and then like an intimate team level. Yeah. And then this, like you, like you were just showcasing, it's, it's even more broad than that. I don't want to say necessarily specifically departmental level, but 
again, more than ever before, HR is contributing to large business initiatives. Yes. We are seeded into those things. So, you know, if we're looking at it from those eyes, seeing the large scale scope projects like different departments roadmaps and how we fit into it and also how they're progressing so that we can strategize, we can be proactive and say, do these team members need help? You know, do we need to recruit for very specific roles? How can we reskill? You know, what are your blockers? We're already having those again before we're having to spend the recurring meeting time that's such valuable yeah. time on any of it. It's, it's just, I love this tool. And specifically, like I said, the senior leaders love it because you've now replaced six touch base meetings. Yeah. At, from a team level with but your senior leaders. It almost it almost totally gets rid of status meetings. Right. It's, yeah. It's really helpful. Well, and then what it does, it, it well, it transforms them. Yeah. I would argue that it actually transforms status meetings into get stuff done. Yeah. Get decisions made. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Discussion time becomes decision time. So well I love said. It. Well said. So we showed you two different tools, Trello and Jira, uh, and we showed you di different processes that 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 you can do in each. Um, if you have any questions about like when to move from Trello to Jira, I mean, I mean, broadly speaking, uh, if you need um, if you need to enforce workflows. If you need to roll up to higher level items like projects or initiatives, if you need more advanced automation or uh, integrations, Jira is the tool for you. Um, if you just need someone to build it for you because you don't have time to do it. Sure, yeah. Uh, we can also help with that. But, I mean. If you if you need to get started with either of these, um, Trello.com, Jira.com. Uh, Trello, uh, you can get started for free Jira, there's a free trial and there's a free tier, but it's it's not really applicable for teams. But you can start trying things out and build a proof of concept. And in fact, speaking of proof of concept, um, all of these processes, like like the hiring process and and our um, and our initiative management process, this is this is the process that we use internally to build these for ourselves and also our clients. Uh, we start on a whiteboard and we say, what is our what is our current process and what is our desired process? We then go through a workshop where we where we refine that into our you know truly desired process. We then build a proof of concept in the tool. Uh, we circulate that among the stakeholders. We build a minimum viable product for us to roll out because we really care about um, uh, about iteration, which you'll see later. We we pilot that with a small group of stakeholders. We then write our change management plan. We roll out the minimum viable product. And then the best word in this whole list mm -hmm. is we iterate. We don't have to, to build something perfect the first time because these tools are really flexible. And there's a change management aspect about getting people into the tool and having their own say in how it gets built um, around the process that they have already built themselves, but just doesn't exist in a tool yet. Mm -hmm. So, so this is the rough outline of how we built all of these things for us internally and how we built them for our clients. All right, so uh, we want to start wrapping this up. And what we want to do is say a number of things. One, we have a lot more events like this uh, and a lot more activities. Uh, one of them coming up is a chocolate event that showcases a different Atlassian tool called Loom. Loom is an awesome tool. It's a, it's a really simple screen and video recording tool that revolutionizes the way that you communicate internally with your teams. Mm -hmm. It basically accelerates asynchronous work. Um, so you might have heard us talk about Loom at Sherm. I think that Maris did um, on your talk. Yeah, and the webinar as well, which, which is linked. Um, yeah, we dive into Loom. It's, yeah, that's, talk about a transformative yeah. tool. So if you want to get uh, chocolate sent to you, uh, and really good chocolate too, and also visually beautiful chocolate, um, that link is in the chat. Um, and, and if you go to that link, you can also see a lot of the other trainings that we do, including one on Trello, if you're into that. Um, so join a webinar, attend an event, uh, hunt us on YouTube. Man, do we have a lot of YouTube content out there. Uh, or, or you can register for uh, some of our classes. But um, either way, uh, if you want to talk about any of these concepts, we love to nerd out on this stuff. So uh, please feel free to email either of us and we'll be happy to talk about not only not only tools, because tools are the end result of all this, but what are the processes that you're going to put 
into those tools um, to make everything work. Um, and then we're going to stop for just a minute and do a Q&A. But before we do that, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us uh, and spending your valuable time watching this. We really hope you got something beneficial out of it uh, and that it was worth your valuable time. So thank you for your kind attention. Uh, and we look forward to chatting with you hopefully later.